It's about as far north in the world as you can possibly go, over 3,000 kilometers from the nearest city. In fact, if you pictured a globe on a stand, this place would be somewhere under the little cap at the top. It's called Eureka, and it's home to the world's northernmost full-time weather station, a place Arctic scientists are flocking to from all over the world. They're coming here as part of International Polar Year, a massive global scientific project studying the effects of climate change on our planet. Wayne Pollard is with the team from McGill University in Montreal, some 6,000 kilometers to the south. I think Eureka is one of the, the few places in the Arctic where you get a sense of, of a truly structured science environment. This isn't easy work due in large part to the weather. Even at high noon, it's typically well below minus 20 degrees. But taking measurements this far north is one of the best ways to understand the effects of global warming. Perched along the 80th parallel, literally at the top of the world, Eureka is like a catch basin for the pollution generated further south. We were going to use a bigger balloon for this, but it's too windy. Twice a day, scientists like Kelly Spokes release these massive balloons to capture ozone and humidity levels in the atmosphere. And the Arctic is a, a great sort of global laboratory. You know, we're, we're well clear of the worst of the on-site atmospheric pollutions. What we're looking at is the stuff that's mixing up and covering our entire globe. In other words, from up here, scientists have a bird's eye view of pollution and ozone depletion and their early impact. While this weather station used to be a joint Canada-America project, the U.S. pulled out decades ago. Now, 60 years after the first scientists dropped into this barren landscape, Canada proudly maintains vigil here. And with global warming on the minds of many Canadians, this cold, desolate landscape might hold some of the biggest clues yet to what many say is the biggest challenge facing our planet. This is Global National's Tara Nelson reporting.